Fibonacci channels, or fib channels for short, are relatively straightforward tools to use after some practice. As the name suggests, they implement Fibonacci ratios to better define movement that channels in a clear direction. The main difficulties come from determining how to effectively place this tool on the chart based on current market context. We'll see the various uses of fib channels along with preferred conditions for their application and cases where they fail and or have limitations. A wide range of real chart examples will be covered from various time ranges. So no matter when you watch this or which particular charts you choose to apply the Fibonacci channel on, information from this tutorial will be of use to you. When placing a Fib channel, there are three points to consider. Points 1 to 2 will follow a valid trend line and form the basis of the channel. Point 3 will usually be placed on a major landmark that is formed on the chart, such as a long-term reversal. Fib numbers beyond the 0 to 1 range can also be used to expand the reach of the channel. There are also options to extend the channel to the left and right, so the channel can cover past and future movement. When there's clear bullish or bearish movement that begins to widen, FIB channels can help identify more clear trend lines within a traditional channel and beyond its borders. Since points 1 and 2 form the basis of the channel, with a trend line, they have the greatest impact on how the FIB channel is formed. This mainly concerns how steep or shallow the channel is oriented. Point 3 largely determines how far apart or spread out the levels are. These are the same levels based on the same ratios from other FIB tools, it's just in the form of a channel. In particular, it shares elements from the FIB retracement and extension, along with the FIB speed resistance fan. Ideally, the trend line for points 1 and 2 would be on a moderate slope close to 45 degrees and comprised of sharper swing points that are recent and relatively close together. Then place point 3 on a major structure such as at the peak of this last major reversal. In this case, since there are several downswing points around the same height, choosing either one won't make a big difference, but usually you would choose the most recent downswing point around the reversal area. Unless there's a very steep and short-term drop with frequent swing points, it usually won't be useful to base a fib channel on such a steep trend line such as this. Generally, a trend that's more long-term and or has a more moderate slope is best paired with fib channels that are also of a moderate slope. And sometimes point three may not be at the exact location of a major swing point because it's a question of balance when determining how far apart you want the fib levels to be from each other within the channel. Generally, if swing points and retracements within a trend are more volatile and cover a wider price range, you want the fib channel to cover a wider area, such as in this case where it is quite suitable to have point three relatively far away from points one and two in order to produce fib levels that are far apart from each other. Otherwise, the trend lines within the channel would be all congested and crammed together and not be very useful. When fib levels are too close together within a channel, it's difficult to separate them and use them as individual trend lines, especially when there's congestion and increased volatility, such as near the bottom of this channel. Whereas significant events such as sharp reversals and major breakouts usually happen near the borders of the channel, rather than near the internal levels of the channel. This sharp incline provides a good example of when it's appropriate to have a fib channel based on a sharper trend line. And when there's a bearish reversal, there are great swing points to produce a stable trend line and fib channel at a moderate angle. However, the internal fib levels are too close to each other and produce the same problems we discussed earlier. The solution is to widen the channel by extending point 3 further away from the trend line from points 1 and 2. The start of the last major bullish move is a great place to reference for determining a clear place to put point 3. This way an internal level can capture moderate to major movement such as this swing point. Rather than having this kind of event take place near the border of a more compact fib channel. With the shift back towards an uptrend, we can see the same kind of process of widening a channel to get more clear coverage of internal levels as useful trend lines. There are usually several options depending on how wide or narrow you want the lines to be from each other. Even though there are some sharper short-term drops, a shallower fib channel can still be used if it covers a longer duration. This can help filter out noise during periods of congestion and have more moderately sized reversals and retracements take place within the internal levels of the channel. We can add extension levels beyond the 0 to 1 range, and specifically apply a separate channel to that area where there was the steeper downtrend, 
though you'd have to reorient it so the extension levels go towards the right side, rather than an orientation where there is coverage of the extension levels to the left side. This sharper angle for the channel is appropriate, given the sharp short-term drop and the context of the market during the following weeks. When there is a clear shift back towards a more long-term uptrend, it's all right to have point 3 and the extension levels towards the left side since the trend line based on point 1 and 2 gets good coverage towards the top right corner during this stable incline. Though in this case the extension levels aren't that necessary and we can get a better result by extending the wideness of the levels by moving point 3 higher back towards that major landmark of the past bearish reversal. With the development towards this more shallow decline, it will be most helpful to have a shallow trend line based on the highest downswing points. This way those lower channel levels and extension levels can be put to good use when price falls onto them during the eventual bearish continuation. And here are some alternative approaches without using extension levels, but instead a wider channel, just using those levels from 0 to 1 that is achieved by placing point 3 at some of the most significant upswing points during the past uptrend. The chosen swing points will depend on how wide you want the channel, and how wide you want the channel will depend on whether you want the levels within the channel to show trend lines that are closer or further apart for more or less detail in the short or long term. Start by marking a major area of support or resistance, such as these swing points near the gap down area. Then draw a fib channel that will have at least some of its levels eventually running through these areas. And in theory, just like intersections with other diagonal lines such as trend lines and fib fan levels, more significant events such as these large upswings are more likely to occur at those intersections where the fib channel lines intersect with those support and resistance levels we drew earlier. And of course, realistically, not all major events will be covered by these intersections, and there can be some variation between the exact location of these intersections based on where and how you choose to apply the fib channel. The exact same statements could be made except now within the context of this uptrend. And like with some previous examples, the trend lines identified by the channel can still be useful even after price has briefly exited the channel. Even with such great results like this, where major upswings, downswings, and continuation areas are identified by the intersection of channel lines and regular support and resistance levels, it's more realistic to expect the majority of movements to take place near the intersection rather than exactly on it. Because even if a major swing point like this doesn't exactly happen on the intersection, the candles that form it will often touch both the price level and the fib channel level that are related to the intersection. In addition to the choices of where to place a fib channel and how its points can be adjusted, there's plenty of choice in terms of what to combine it with, beyond just manually drawing support and resistance levels. One natural option would be the FIB retracement, except change its settings so the levels contrast with the FIB channel levels to be more easily seen. It's the same kind of idea we covered earlier for the confluence of price and time, though in this case it's not so effective, mainly because it's not an ideal situation to use the FIB channel for a prolonged period given the long-term horizontal range-bound movement, which is actually good context for the FIB retracement levels to remain relevant for a long time, but at the same time, channels need to be readjusted or redrawn more often to more accurately reflect constant medium to short-term trend changes. It does help there are constant sharp swing points to reference, so new channels can readily be drawn without much trouble or delay. And when there's finally more decisive long-term movement, in this case, a downward acceleration out of the range, we see familiar variations for applying the FIB channel based on how far apart you would like the lines to be. For more detail in the short term, it might be useful to have the FIB retracement and extension levels to be based on more recent movements that have price levels closer together in order to better match the proportions of shorter term FIB channels where the levels are also closer together. But that doesn't always need to be the case. One of them could be spaced further apart, such as the levels in this channel. Keep in mind, time analysis with the FIB channel is only a secondary use. FIB channels will be more reliably applied in the uses we covered before, where it identifies trends more clearly during well-defined bearish and bullish periods in the market. Within the longer term, drop attention focuses towards these two more recent downswing points in order to reference a clear trend line that will be relevant for a FIB channel as price eventually continues the drop 
following this well-defined slope. Once a more significant bullish reversal returns to break over the channel, it's possible to flip this channel vertically. Keeping in mind to line up the boundaries with clear swing points to maintain the same approximate slope, and to have channel levels contact major swing points such as this one. The results are quite clear when the uptrend begins to halt, and there's the formation of a potential bearish reversal range that does eventually complete. Interestingly, the declining slope of this range closely approximates the channel lines. Now we can reference this structure as price begins to fall once again, and use the channel line similar to regular FIB extension levels that can also take advantage of the clear start and end of the previous uptrend to reference for a trend-based FIB time zone. Naturally, intersections between these two FIB tools, when price falls onto them, produces some degree of support, and marks where more resistance can occur for upswings. Realistically, most of these will be minor swing points in continuation areas. However, the intersections can also take place at more significant reversal areas, which in the broader context naturally line up with historically significant price ranges. This example begins with a fairly well-defined large channel that contains the key feature of a classic bearish continuation. So even though there's a break over the channel's upper boundary, the mid to upper 30s price range is presenting the first area of major resistance potential following the additional bullish feature of this reversal range prior to the break over the channel, which is turning out to be the possible start of a larger bullish reversal in the long term. Logically, the lower 50s would be the next major area of resistance potential, mainly because it lines up with the upper boundary of the range found in the middle of the bearish continuation. Given the continued bullish developments, we can now position a FIB channel on a fairly steep incline, the basis of which will be this current uptrend line. Then the third point of the FIB channel will be based on the high of the last major downswing point that defines the top of the range we discussed earlier. With this setup, the areas of interest will revolve around those intersections between the FIB channel lines with these defined areas of resistance, which will only become relevant if price manages to hold over this previous range and reverse back up towards the boundary up into the 50s. So it's not too surprising to see more bearish price action now approaching this intersection. In the medium to short term context, the appearance of these more neutral to bearish candles is given extra confluence by taking place near the upper boundary of Bollinger Bands, resulting in it not being too surprising when this sharp drop takes place within a relatively short time span. Not every intersection with the channel lines is important. These intersections only matter if price is close to or in contact with them, meaning since price is nowhere near this intersection, it ends up not being relevant at all. And depending on how a channel is positioned, some major events like this later bearish reversal at the same price range won't be marked by any intersections at all. In light of these developments over the course of a year, it would be useful to adjust the position of the FIB channel as this more shallow trend line developed. And in this case, it's close to but not near the center of any intersections with the trend line and the defined resistance range making it extra important to also take a look at those short-term developments such as the candle patterns and where they take place in relation to the upper boundary of Bollinger Bands. Even when a chart is moving in a clear channel, you don't necessarily have to place a FIB channel on the boundaries of that exact channel structure. Instead, part of the FIB channel could be based on trend lines at the boundaries of a defined channel. While the third point might not be anywhere near the boundaries of a channel, but instead be at a major reversal point, such as in this case. Nonetheless, internal lines within the channel will cover the boundaries of the channel structure. This positioning can be chosen to avoid a FIB channel that is too narrow. Now for this steady downtrend, the first choice for a trend-based FIB time zone would naturally be based on the previous uptrend and the transition towards more bearish sentiment. Of course, there can be several choices and variations for a trend-based FIB time zone, and usually, like in this case, when it's combined with a FIB channel, there often won't just be one trend-based FIB time zone position that is drastically better than the rest. The same holds true for the application of a regular FIB time zone and its possible variations, so it's definitely useful to look for areas of overlap between the various intersections with the FIB channel and the varied positions of these FIB time analysis tools which can end up being quite close together, often at areas with more significant events, such as sharper reversals and chart patterns. Similar to the beginning of the last example, here's a large-scale bearish continuation, 
where the range in the middle also has a slight decline that is then contrasted with a sharp reversal, and a similar kind of continuation formation except on the bullish side. With such clear, large-scale structures to reference, the first FIB techniques we can apply can simply be retracements and extensions. We can combine two of them and see key levels run through various stages of the next bullish continuation, which actually had a noticeable inclined range quite suitable for a compact FIB channel that would mostly be useful for its extension levels. In other words, the extension channel lines those channel lines beyond one that would intersect with the ranges defined by the combined FIB extension levels. In this case, there's no direct contact near the center of those intersections. So attention focuses on this wider area where there is contact with a place where a channel line runs through the defined resistance range of the extension levels. In terms of a larger FIB channel, there are options of positioning around these four reversal areas, except most of these positions we've tried so far won't be too relevant for our area of interest, because it's better to have the larger channel options on an incline due to the bullish continuation formations and the incline within the last one we discussed earlier. This gives us a similar result with a channel line running through our area of interest. To build on this further and narrow down the time range, a regular FIB time zone has a good option for placement at the last part of the inclined range, where the second half of the bullish continuation takes off. With a stable downtrend like this, we have great conditions to easily place a declined FIB channel, which captures some clear and key reversal areas. And because the chart moved down in such a well-defined channel, there are multiple choices on how to position the channel but overall there's no major difference between these choices. This would of course not be a good option since it doesn't follow the clear structure of the defined channel, and the area between the FIB channel lines is too narrow. Also, it's better to have the extension channel lines face up and to the right side to get better coverage of the chart as it moves in a more neutral to bullish fashion following the break over the upper boundary of the original channel. There can also be similar results with the first two points of the channel based on the downtrend line at the lower boundary of the channel, and the third point of the FIB channel at the highs of the peak that formed from just before the clear channel began. Of course, there will be contact with different areas compared to the previous versions of the FIB channel we tried. Now to a completely different chart and market clear swing points during a defined uptrend, provide another example where the extension channel lines beyond the 0 to 1 range can keep up with a sharp acceleration like this. Naturally, stronger resistance is to be expected, and allows for the opportunity to have sharp retracements that can even lead to a more significant downtrend that will be opposed by more support potential upon dropping into the 0 to 1 range of the FIB channel, in turn leading to consolidation ranges becoming more common. However, that doesn't mean the downtrend is guaranteed to be halted and reversed. Now that the influence of those previous inclines is definitely broken, attention can be placed on a decline FIB channel, which can be narrower and based entirely on the more well-defined downward channel portion of this downtrend. Or like in previous examples, it can be wider and have the third point based on more significant and longer-term reversal areas such as these. So as usual, there are multiple options and variations, and not simply just one correct way to place a Fibonacci channel. To learn more about other Fibonacci methods, as well as indicators, follow us Sencor. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.